the debut spotlight. I'm Rachel Berenbaum, author of A Bend in the Stars. And today my guest is Sophie Cousins, whose debut novel, this time next year, just dropped. It is so hot, it's been scooped up by all kinds of book clubs, Good Morning America. It's all over the place. Sophie, congratulations. Tell me, what is your book about? Thank you so much for having me on. Well, this is very much a kind of feel good, heartwarming rom-com that's quite seasonal because it's all set around New Year's Eve. So it's basically about a guy and a girl called Minnie and Quinn who were both born on New Year's Day at the same hospital, just one minute apart. And their life is a sort of series of misconnections. And on their 30th birthday, they reconnect and that is the kind of premise of the book. <laughs> I loved it. I just felt like it was the kind of book that I needed right now. Um, and one of the things you write about and one of the centerpieces, of course, is the notion of luck, being born lucky or not lucky. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so basically it's very much, um, the, the characters are really polar opposites. So Quinn has been born very, like with a silver spoon in his mouth where everything has gone his way and he's quite, quite wealthy. Whereas Minnie is very much been born with a chip on her shoulder. She's been born into a slightly poorer family where she's always had to struggle. Um, and she really felt that she was born unlucky. Um, even though they were only born a minute apart, that minute made a huge difference to both of their lives. Um, Quinn was actually the first baby born in the 90s. And so he won a 50,000 pound prize money that was being offered by a newspaper. And obviously Minnie then missed out by a minute. And for her whole life, her mother has said to her, you were born unlucky girl, you know, you, you, you missed out. And this was almost like the beginning of a jinx for her where she felt like every birthday was unlucky. So the, but yeah, there's a big strong sense of the theme of luck going out throughout the novel of whether you really can be born unlucky or whether luck is something that you make for yourself. And what do you think? Uh, I think it's an interesting one because I think there is definitely such a thing as luck. I mean, even just talking about me sort of suddenly like becoming a New York Times bestseller and this book going like amazingly well, there's been so much luck involved in that as well. Um, all the stars have had to align and being chosen for various book clubs and having readers really engage in, in it. But then equally, there is also a lot of hard work as well that goes into it. So it's, I, I think in a lot of situations, it's a little bit of both. Um, and I think that all of us can identify with, with both sides of the coin sometimes. I think we've all been in situations where we've just felt, I just need my luck to change. Um, and other times when you feel, no, I, I did that. That wasn't just luck, that was me. That was, you know, that, that. So I think we all have that within us. Yeah, I love that part of the book. Um, another thing that I really loved is, uh, I thought friendships played a big part in the book um, and there was a big theme and there was one scene, I think I actually read you talking about how this was one of your favorite scenes, which I was glad because I loved it too. And Minnie is looking at two older women and their best friends, or they seem to be best friends, they're holding hands and she, she just looks at and says, maybe that's what this is all about. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about that though? Because I, I just love that. Absolutely. I mean, I, this is a romantic comedy, but I think it's so much more than that. And actually, I would say anyone who doesn't think they like romances should still give this book a try because it's about, it's about a lot more, more things. And I don't like the idea of a kind of Cinderella story where a girl is like rescued by a man. I think there's so much, many more relationships in life that are very important to sort of being happy with yourself and being comfortable in your place in the world. And in this story, Minnie, the heroine, her relationship with her mother and also her relationship with her best friend, Layla, are very important just in terms of her self-esteem and her, her happiness and sort of how she sees herself in the world. And that's very much a theme that's kind of examined. And, you know, she does say, you know, as, as you said, she, she meets these older women and she thinks, you know, maybe that love is, is, is just as important in a way as romantic love. And I, I very much feel that to be true. I love that you're saying you don't love the Cinderella story and yet you're writing rom-coms. <laughs> I know, that's the irony, that's the irony. And I think that, but I think that the Cinderella story is a little bit 
outdated in a way because you know Prince Charming never really has much of his personality shown and also they it's very much they meet across a dance floor and it's love at first sight and I think actually the modern rom-com reader wants a little bit more than that they want to see a bit of banter and a bit of spark between the characters and they want to see why people have fallen in love and I, I do think there is such a thing as you know lust at first sight but I think that I think relationships and attraction are a bit more complicated maybe than Cinderella and Prince Charming would have us believe. <laughs> and, I, and I also think that it's um, what's quite, I've been very influenced in this book by romantic comedy films. I love all those like 90s classics like Sleepless in Seattle and like Four Weddings and a Funeral. These are all things I grew up on that I really love. And I think there's a lot of kind of nods to that in my book. Like there's a few scenes where she even mentions Sleepless in Seattle. And I think almost like the history of, rom-com and its evolution uh um all all there to kind of embrace and kind of um make make fun of at the same time no oh, but embrace i mean that's why it was so much fun i felt like i can see this as the movie already do you have yeah. a bgl is there something in the works um, there, there are a few conversations happening, but nothing yet has happened on the movie deal. Uh, but yeah, I think as well, because I was an ex-TV producer, I just do see things quite visually. So I think that I, and, and it's quite, um, it, you know, it's all set in beautiful North London on the, on the ponds and on Primrose Hill. And it's kind of, I think, doing for North London what Notting Hill did for Notting Hill, perhaps. So yeah, I definitely can see it as a a as, as, a, as, a, as a movie one day, I hope, but yeah. who knows, watch this space. <laughs> Fingers are crossed for you. Um, so I'm glad you brought up your career because I wanted to ask, you spent 12 years working in TV. So how are rom-coms as books different from rom-coms on the screen? That's an interesting one. I mean, I worked more in kind of like comedy entertainment. So like chat shows, I worked on Graham Norton and things, but we did do lots of very sketches. I mean, I would say on the screen, there's often a lot more room for like visual humor and like someone's expressions or something that happens physically. Whereas what I um, enjoy about writing is actually all the sort of, you know, internal comedy of what someone's thinking and the awkwardness and the embarrassment that um, it's just a slightly different uh, thing to play with, I suppose. But equally, I do describe quite a lot of physical humor as well of just, you know, uh, you know, I, I won't give too much away, but um, yeah awkward fancy dress moments and things like that. So I think, I think you've, got, you've got more to play with in a book in a way, because you've got the reader's imagination, but you've also, you know, you can, you can go inside the character's head as well. So let's switch a little bit to craft. Um, how long did it take you to write this book? So I basically wrote it in the evenings over about, about nine months. Um, I had a date, I was working for an arts charity at the time, and yeah, I, I got the book deal and I sort of had to fit it in around the edges between my day job and my two little children. So it was quite mad, if I'm honest. Um, you birthed I, a book in nine I months. I did, I birthed a book and it was, you know, it's kind of sometimes like the last thing you feel like doing when you've come home from work and you've put the kids to bed and then you're like, I've got to go and write a thousand words. And I had a very, I knew I had a deadline. I had a very strict kind of word count limit with myself where I had to write 5,000 words a week. And that meant a thousand words a night, four nights, five nights a week. Um, but in a way that kind of discipline was good for me. And now that I um, am very fortunate enough to have given up the day job and I'm doing this full time, I'm finding it a little bit harder <laughs> in a way because I don't have that kind of very clear window where I just have to do it, you know. Well, also, I mean, it's just come out, so you probably have all kinds of press and, you know, interviews like this, right? That yeah, it's, up a and lot it's of just time. exactly. It's just exciting. And I think when you when you're writing your first book, you've got no idea whether five people are going to read it or like 50,000 people are going to read it. And so it's just very much you and the story for such a long time. And and when it first came out as well, you suddenly feel, you know, I've spent such a long time with these characters, Quinn and Minnie, where it's just the three of us, I know that sounds really weird because they're fictional characters, but you know, I'd been living with them for a long time and then suddenly kind of giving them to the, it's like taking people to a, to a party and introducing them. And it, it's so kind of vulnerable making, you know, I don't know, it's not the right word, but like you feel very exposed suddenly. And I've just been really happy that people have really em em embraced these stories and, and these characters. So, and it's been amazing, but yeah, I feel very swept up in the whirlwind and I need to, 
go and borrow away and do my edits for book two at some point but yeah <laughs> but so well deserved yeah, um, exactly. so what was the hardest part about getting published so the hardest part about getting published so I think that finding the right story is actually was actually the hardest part for me I had this fantastic agent um, who's always supported my writing but I've, I've I started quite a few projects that I then kind of fell by the wayside or I kind of sent her three chapters and I said is there something in this and she just nothing quite hooked me enough to finish it and then but with this one I, I, I kind of Penguin had said the kind of book that they 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 wanted and it kind of just instantly struck a chord with me and as soon as I had the idea of like new year and it's quite hot it's quite um tightly formatted this book as well and I knew it was going to be set in the present day across the year with all these flashbacks to New Year's Eve in the past. And for me, once I had that idea and I had a deadline, it was just so much easier for me to write. So I think, yeah, for me, the right idea at the right time uh, was, was the most challenging thing. And it was kind of, a, yeah, everything just came together for this one. Yeah. But there's a lot of dusty half finished novels in my drawer, put it that way. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can come back. I can so come back. When I put this book down, the one question I really was dying to ask you is in rom-com, I feel like there's a very fine line between cheese and beauty, right? Yes. So how do you balance there? I mean, what's interesting is that some people who maybe haven't loved the book quite so much have sort of said, oh, it's too cheesy or whatever. I mean, uh, all the cheese in this book for me is done with a quite knowing, uh, like, you know, it, in some ways it's kind of, as I said, a bit of a pastiche of some of those 90s rom-coms, like some of the overblown scenes, you know, you always see like, say for example, there's an engagement scene in this book, which um, for me was a bit of a pastiche of like Enchanted where they're all dancing in fancy dress and singing and dancing around the park. And for me, what I thought was funny was imagine if someone put on a massive show like that and then, you know, the person who was, who it was for just didn't get the point and it was all a bit awkward and embarrassing. So I think for me, I love the cheese, but it's also kind of playing with the cheese and being a bit knowing about it and having kind of undercutting it with humor that you might not expect. Um, and that is very much kind of my sense of humor. So I hope that that's what comes across in the book. So what kind of advice do you have for new or aspiring writers out there? So I think that one of the biggest pieces of advice I would have would be to set yourself this weekly word count. I mean, that's what really, I think it can be really hard to get an idea just finished. And so whatever it may be, even if it's like 200 words a week or 2000 words a week, whatever your life is full of, just think realistically what you could achieve and stick to it like glue. Um, and then eventually you will have a manuscript to work on. Um, I think my second piece of advice that really helped me as well was, would be to apply for competitions. Um, before I published this, I got an ebook um, published uh, about five years ago, and that was from entering a competition, uh, which was called Love at First Write, where you had to write the first three chapters of an idea. And there's lots of short story th um, competitions you can enter as well. And I think if you're an aspiring writer, those kind of little competitions for like a first chapter or a short story can be really good for your morale and they can help you kind of get seen and get visible. So uh, before we go, can you give us a quick glimpse to book two, what's coming? So book two is, I'm really excited about it. It's called The Way We Met, current title, TBC. Um, and it's basically about a girl called Laura who is obsessed with the meet cute and how people meet. And she's always asking people, how did you meet? And she goes to Jersey, which is a small island where I live, uh, on a work trip. And she picks up the wrong suitcase at the airport. And when she opens the bag, she is convinced that the owner is the love of her life. And all these things in the bag just tell her, this is the man for me. i got to track him down. So it's lots of fun. It's very uh, lighthearted. And yeah, it's all set on the beautiful island of Jersey. So I hope people are going to love it as much as they like this one. <laughs> I can't wait to read it. I'm in line already. Okay, so, good, good. Thank you so much. Congratulations. May you sell many, many copies. Oh, you're so welcome. Lovely to talk to you.